Wait, who's introing? Go ahead. I'll do it. This is episode 18. Two dumbbells and a microphone. I'm DJ Moore. And I'm Joey Dussel. Today's topic, how to get abs. I know, pretty trendy. Borderline clickbait, buzzworthy. absolutely trendy. It has been trendy for a long time. I have a feeling it will always be trendy. Because we have people out there in the fitness industry who just mainly focus on this area alone. Yeah. And I think we should bring some light to this area and talk about how do you really get abs? And I do mean this. Is it visible? Or is it just strength and control with your abs? That's the what, first big question. What is getting abs really freaking mean? Yeah, absolutely. I'm okay. excited for this episode. I think this is going to be a, a useful one and I'm... I appreciate that we can put this message out, you know, and be able to say this. I think it's going to be a good one. I think we might try some of this uh, style, pick a trending topic on yeah. something, and then we'll break it down the way we feel it needs to be broken down. And I think we've set up pretty uh, much our base about who we are and how we feel about things. And I think this trend here needs to be poked at a little different. And I'm yeah. glad you also put a disclaimer up there for people Go ahead, give them the disclaimer. Yeah, though. let's get straight into it. So, because it's even hotter today than it was last week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I got it. So, you know. Hey, that's good. We know you have effective cooling. I sweat. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it happens to me too. Anytime I set, even set foot into the workout space, my most common workout area, just pouring sweat right away. It's like your body learns that that's See, what it should this do. This is the area. Full speed right off, you know. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be in today. We'll be tidy with our time so we can make sure that we get get through it before we're too warm. Yeah. So getting right onto it, the board over there on the wall, we have episode 18, how to get abs. And we want to start off with the disclaimer. Yeah, you give them the disclaimer. Uh, yeah, you give I'm them the do disclaimer. It, yeah. You do it. So here's the disclaimer, tab. right? We talked a little bit before the show when we conceptualize the topic and we wanted to make sure that people wouldn't have any harm from trying to follow any advice that we would share. So the disclaimer is that, you know, we hear often that a weak core can be the source of pain in the body right. and it can be real training to say, oh, just strengthen your abs and that'll fix all your problems. But that's not the message that we want to send. Right. So instead, as you've probably heard many other places, you need to consult a doctor if you have pain before you try anything that we may mention. And uh, we can't give advice on individualized circumstances in a, a situation like this. So you right. will hear us stay a little bit more vague with mm -hmm. prescription type information of how many reps or sets or timings or things like that that need to uh, need to be set for an individual. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Cool. Thank gonna, you. We're not going to be totally exact because I, there's so many variables and uh, we can't cover all the variables. Yeah. yeah we're not that way. Uh Who's this for, though? Uh, man, it's easy. It's for everybody. Yeah. Your core in the anatomy that surrounds the core itself, your, your rectus abdominis, which is what we see as our washboard or six. That's the flashy the six, one that yeah, gets the attention, pack, right? Which, six or eight in my case. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. With the anatomy, some people will never see that extra two. Right. This is just biologically yeah, the way is, their body is formed. So don't feel sad if you can't get eight and yeah. six is all you have. Yeah. Right. That's fine. Six is plenty. Um, well, and that's that's just the flashy, you know, attention grabber, yeah. rectus abdominis, so right? Yeah. And so before that, or, or with that, we should say almost more importantly, there's other layers of your abs, yeah. muscles that you can't even see underneath your skin. And those are inarguably more important right. for proper function and avoiding pain throughout We your don't life. talk about these very often. You and I do very often right. in our training fit, and daily work with people. professionals, yeah. But there's this internal and external oblique. Right. Right? And these are also some things that you can see on the sides and are very flashy that go along with, yeah. the, with a nice six-pack. Very right. lean individuals. You can see kind of a, an angled look to either side. Yeah, and that pulls in their waist and they get that tapered look. However, you're talking about the transverse abdominis. Right. Wow. The most deep inside layer. Nobody gets to see it. Yeah. Sorry. Right. You can never be lean but enough. But this is the main player for back pain, or for, okay. I should say, avoiding back pain, right? Stronger traverse abdominus reduces back pain or eliminates it. And right. we can never see it. So it's not going to be photographed on the cover of Muscle and Fitness magazine. No, it is not flashy. It is not 
it is sort of trendy for a lot of people to do planks. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just something that you're not going to see as this big lunge for. Like everybody's doing the yeah. plank every, because it just really shows. No, a lot of people do their core and they do the movement patterns for the showing of the muscle. Right? Yeah. They, they do these patterns for that. However, for my clients, I do a little bit of everything here. Mm-hmm. We're going to plank a lot, but I've also introduced a plank with motions. Yeah. So you can be in a motion in a plank position and then effectively work yeah. the angles of your abs while nice. affecting your transverse abdominis as well. That's good. And these are, well, man, as we get into it, these yeah. are a hierarchy of movement patterns that we teach our clients. We, we start with the basic, just hand plank or something, mm-hmm. you know, or even more simple than that on the knees and hand plank, depending on where you're at. So, well, yeah. And so as we run through our topics that we've listed over there, the kind of the first question was, who is this for? Yeah. And, and we breezed everybody, right through right, it with everybody. Right. And that's true because whether you're someone who has pain or is looking to avoid pain or you want to get a more visible six pack, you know, whatever your reasons or, may, go ahead. Better at the activity or sport that you're participating in. Yeah, Keep going. Absolutely. So that's the kind of thing that is going to make this for everybody. And we launched right into it with the anatomy because I think it's important for people to understand that that kind of deep set anatomy of you can't see those muscles and they're the ones that matter the most. Well, to us. Yeah. We exactly. think that these matter more than the other ones. That's what I'm trying to yeah, establish. Let's perfect. flip that relationship, right? Because yeah. we know we, we, we want our audience to understand as well that there is this this deep interest in invisible muscles that don't get much press. Right. They're yeah. just not flashy. I'm sorry. That, yeah. That's where we're at. We have a lot of fitness professionals out there that won't talk about this because it just doesn't bring enough attention. Yeah. However, it does do more for you as an individual than the other ones will. Yeah, agreed. And especially if you're new to this or beginning, or maybe this is your second year, planking should always be included. I yeah. still do planking patterns. Yeah. I may do a, a harder Good. version, mm-hmm. but I'm still in it. Yeah. Because I have developed. So again, planking, side planking, and any version of planking for your transverse is yeah. something that we highly recommend over well crunches or flutter kicks right. or leg lifts or leg right. lifts to bar because something those crazy. take a another degree of difficulty yeah. that you may not be ready for and planks sort of build you up into it or give yeah. you that first step or platform to get to those yeah so. yeah exactly so the kind of the chain of thought as i'm listening to you and i hope the audience is following along you know we're targeting everybody We've zeroed in on that transverse abdominus because it's a base muscle that's going to influence the performance of all other exercises. Right. And even decades into our own health and fitness careers, our participation in workouts, we're still doing plank movements, movements that yeah. target that transverse abdominus because it's not hit with those flashy ones which get all of the attention. So the, the real key message here is that those movements, and particularly anti-movements, Because remember, planks and side planks, it's about not allowing any deformation. You're keeping yourself stationary. Those, I think, should be occupying much more of a person's training time and certainly be put before some of the movements that get the the unwitting attention. That's absolutely true. So when we say it's for everybody, we really generally say this, yes. It is for everybody, and there's going to be stages for those in development. Yeah. Uh, The person who's been at the gym for 10 or plus years – well, their development and stuff is going to be much higher. We should know this by now. Yeah. Maybe this should be in the disclaimer. If you are new to getting into physical fitness and working out, remember the stuff that you watch, right? That stuff on YouTube, the stuff where I got this idea from, right? Yeah. Was way too difficult for a brand new person. That's true, yeah. But a brand new person or a desperate person wants to know the trick. Right. Like how is this person so ripped in the title? We'll say abs in six weeks. Yeah. Wait. It's going to get clicked. Yeah. And so I want people to understand there's a disclaimer here. Like, be careful of what you watch. If the person that you're watching doesn't have a beginning move or a prior, the first steps of this, and you're new, don't buy into this. Don't buy into these really fancy moving patterns that they're showing and think that this is the right one for you right then. Yeah. There needs to be a stages or beginning a media uh, a middle and a hard version of all these yeah it's like you and i train our clients we go well if so-and-so can't do this version 
let's start the beginning version again. Right. And then and we back work it away. off one step. Yeah. Or we know automatically, I know my clients where they're at. So I just go, this is the version yeah. that you need now. Right. So disclaimer, watch carefully. Think, yeah, that's really, I'm glad you added that and brought it back up because, you know, it's, it's really something that I think with fitness trainers, we kind of do it intuitively for ourselves and for our clients. There's kind of a risk to reward relationship, a calculation that's made for engagement in any movement. And if we look at the core movements or again, anti-movements like plank, yeah. there's like almost no risk. There's a great training stimulus. We can harden our core and train all those muscles, but our back is stationary. Vertebrae are happy, you know, if we're in proper position, but that's the kind of thing where if we compare it to a movement like crunches or leg lifts or something that's involving the hips and now a lot of spinal flexion, now we can actually have some risk to what we're doing. And so as DJ was pointing out, if you're a beginner with this, let's make sure that the training you do is really safe and effective and you can work up to those things that are a little more flashy but carry a little more risk. That's right. We're going to build a foundation for you guys first. So this is what kind of our podcasts are really about. We're showing you the foundations of all these things. And if you don't match up any of these foundations, yeah. it's okay to, to start over again and make sure that foundation is set before moving on. This is what we have written on the board. It's safety. Yeah. Why is nobody thinking safety anymore? I don't know. Maybe we should just talk no. about it. We, okay. it. we got to push it up and yeah, make sure that it's important. We want you to feel safe. And I know this to be true. Like some of these ab exercises that I've seen on YouTube, <laughs> mm -hmm. whoa, man, they're difficult. They're gnarly. They're yeah. really intense and, and complex and can really drive. And that's for other people who are there. Yeah. But they show it, and the person doing it is just shredded. Right. And it's like, yeah, I know the way to abs. I'd like to ask that person, hey, where did you start? Mm. What, what is your, where was your ab journey? Like, how did you get to this yeah. point of awesomeness? Because the people who are watching you, may not know that you started off going, I can only do six crunches, you know, right. or I can play for only 30 seconds. Yeah. So who's it for? It's for everybody. I think this one ties in though. Do you need abs? Yeah, right. What, what do you mean? <laughs> do I need them? I need them. Right. I need them desperately. Matter of fact, it's the reason why we call it a core. Mm -hmm. It's the center. Right, it's yeah. Where things we think about just the word itself. Tie into and why yeah. we press this so heavily or should be pressing it heavily is because things build off around it. Mm -hmm. And I think you brought up that, what is that, core equals magnifier? Talk yeah. A, talk a little bit about that. So I love this part, yeah, because um, we have this on the board. Do you really need abs? And, and we've really covered on the importance of it for everyone, whether it's athlete or someone that's just looking to avoid pain or go about their everyday life. And I stumbled upon this portion from one of my favorite strength coaches, Dan John. He's got a great book right over on my shelf where he lays out a little bit of like a mathematical formula. And I won't get into all of it, but the portion of this formula that matters is he uses your core strength as a magnifier of whatever else you're working on in your program. And he has a couple examples like a speed skater and, and you know, a grandma and a, a military guy. In all three of those individuals, and I would argue in all individuals, whatever you're trying to achieve will be amplified with the improvement of your core strength. Yes. This is one of the things I was thinking about for next year's uh, snowboarding Yeah, um, and my continuing skateboarding is I have to, to twist a lot. Yeah. And there's those motions, right? And I have to be in those motions a lot. So me, I have to magnify my, my workouts to achieve greater degrees yeah. of ability in my play. So that's my magnifier. And that's why I've been really focusing heavily in creating a better core pattern for me and core yeah. ability, because I'm going to need to use that to get better at the next thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to build upon it to do a little bit better job. And that's I can tell example. you the truth <laughs> every time. I don't like doing my core very much. I'll be honest. Yeah, I don't. But... Every time I really focus intently on it and really purposely put it in the beginning of my workout, which is what I do, and we'll get into that. Yeah. Man, all my skateboarding, all my snowboarding, and all my other lifts just get cleaner and yeah. better. It's, it's, it's the truth every That's time. It. And if coming from a person like me who doesn't, I don't like to do them. And I will probably fall off the bandwagon a little bit for a, you know, a couple of weeks, sure. right? I'll come back to it. But I do notice in those couple of weeks, it's like, 
dang it. It's true. Yeah. You need to continue to do it in order to keep go. it with you. Yeah. So I can tell you, it works every single time. Yeah. It magnifies my ability for some other things, and it will do the same for you as well. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's it exactly. You know, it's, a, it's an amplifier, a magnifier, and I know it can be a little bit, like you said, it's not very intriguing. It's not very enticing to do, it burns. to do core. It's physically uncomfortable. And I think it carries a little extra saltiness because that discomfort is like so close to the center of our being. It's not like your bicep is burning or your it quads are hurting. It's like you're inside where you are. It's a great observation. Yeah. And so uh, I think for that, like we can roll right into to what core strength really is. And maybe we can talk a little bit about like what doing core really means. Yeah. Well, do we, do we want to talk a little bit about the visible versus the braced just to give them the idea? It's like, Visible core is not necessary to equal strength. Yeah. It's not true. Right. Right. Someone can have an extremely strong core and be have plenty of body fat and you'll never see the wraps. Yeah, exactly. The invisible core, which is what I call it, are the muscles that are the most important, but we can't see it all. We touched on it already with transverse being deep inside our body. But the thing that people leave out with core is that these muscles – you know, when we talk about them, we're thinking of everything from your collarbones to your kneecaps on the front side of your body and the back. And the back. And it's the right. back that we all forget about, right? And here we are totally. even halfway in, we're bringing it up for the first time, but your glutes, your low back, your hamstrings, those muscles also are an important part of your core that we huge, never see even huge, in the mirror. Right. You're so yeah. right. You're so yeah. Right. And so the invisible core, I think it's the, the most important part for us to think about, right? right. And the, it's like an iceberg. The visible part is, is maybe the six-pack in front, but we want all that mass underneath and behind. That's where we really care about strength. Yeah. And what we're talking here is we're really mentioning it as a health thing, yeah. not a visible thing. We right. all know you'd love to have a flat belly, maybe with a couple little dimples in it where some abs are. I yeah. get it. But that leads us into something else. Did we miss anything on your side? No, you're I wanted, doing it. Go ahead. I want to just read the... Yeah, hit it. It's the diet. Yeah. It's the diet. It, we it, can't it, not address it, this. It, yeah, if you want visible abs, let's mm -hmm. be honest, you're going to have to eat correctly. Yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. Because the guys and girls who are out there showing their abs on the YouTube and all this TikTok and all this stuff like that, well, guaranteed their diet's on point. That yeah. has to be in order for you to see that. Now, some people are a little bit more naturally lean, and it's easier for them to stay within that. It's a good their way diet to put it, doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be as perfect. However, <laughs> if you don't have visible abs at this moment and you yeah. want visible abs, I bet you your diet's going to have to change. Not only that, how you address your workouts, the intensities, the mm -hmm. frequencies, these are all indicative of how you're going to see them. Right. Without this process, I don't care what. You're watching, you won't see them unless you diet correctly. Yeah. Eat correctly and train correctly. Yeah. That's how finicky this area is. For it can be really for, challenging. For definition yeah. for yeah. most people. Yeah. So please don't think that just by doing core movements and all this stuff, you're gonna get to see your abs. You won't. Yeah. You go you can make them a ton stronger and a ton better to help you with everything else, but you may not necessarily see them. They won't be visible nope. without that certain level of leanness. And right. I think you said it perfectly where that that visible level might be harder or easier for individuals to achieve. That's right. But everyone has to go through a, a bit of, you know, withholding on diet, changing of portions, timings, all that kind of stuff. I don't I think it's really unlikely that anybody could have like a, a real desirable look just totally, na you know, naturally and carefree. Without, we don't we don't live in a society that supports no. that, you know, unfortunately. So I think that the real, in the quest for visible abs, the two main pillars are that leanness, where there's not fat blocking the view, That's right. and then the, the size physically of the ab muscles themselves. And Correct. we'll touch on it again here in a bit where we get into the principles of training, but I think people mess up on their, on their abs. They're doing all this ultra high rep stuff, which mm. is the total opposite of how we build muscle size anywhere else on the body. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like you might be trying to make big, visible abs once you've achieved that leanness that is required but maybe your ab workouts aren't trying for the same goal right yeah. right that's a 
that's a whole nother topic. Yeah, that's that a whole is, side right? topic with this. Yeah. And so I guess. Well, and, and as we get into the the visible abs, right, I think we've, I hope we've established the point that it's more important that you have this ability to brace your core, to, to have that tightness in the front and in the back. And if, if your abs are not visible when you achieve that bracing, I would say you're A-OK. And I hope you don't get down on yourself for, for not having some sort of model body. I got something in my throat. Dude. Oh, shoot. Okay. No, it's cool. No, to... let it run. Okay. I'm just letting I can you know you, out if here. I'm not you won't gonna... cough. And that's not coughing. This. It's just a tickle. Okay. <laughs> it's making my eye water. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so we're good. So if somebody sees my eye water, it's like, yeah, I'm just tearing up for the subject. He's so it's like, into there's this. something tickling my throat. No, okay. Well, let me know. We can pause if you need to. No, we're all good. <clears throat> it's going away, but I wanted to be clear. So okay, like, good. Why does he look like he's dying over there? I'm like, mm. he's all right. Uh, true core strength anti movement is something that you touched lightly on with that plank there. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, that this anti rotational movement is very important. We see a lot of things with movement with the core. And when we're planking, we, I talked two things. I said there is this anti, like you were saying, yeah. don't move. But then there is some planking you can do with movement. Right. Okay. So there are. However, for the beginner and the learning people, don't move at first. That's the key message. Yeah. Don't move at first. Yeah. Learn how to completely make yourself stable and flat. Mm -hmm. Controlled. That yeah. is first. Yeah. Next comes the movement patterns after time has been done. And a lot of people have asked me. I'm doing it, man. Okay. Applause for that. And I'm going to cheer for a long, long, long time because I 100% I agree with that. And I've helped more people with taking them back to the basics of saying, hey, can you do a anti-movement plank, side plank, glute bridge, hollow body hold, right? And yeah, the hollow body even if they too. can do good core stuff like toe to bars and knee to elbows, and it's like, whoa, how come they can't do great at this also? And then all of a sudden those toe to bars improve once we start practicing the anti-movement. So I start everyone with that and I, I could not agree more wholeheartedly, but it gets skipped over. People immediately think of crunches and legless and stuff. But instead, we should be starting with planks and side planks. And I think the important thing with this is that you, your body should be practicing the full body tensioning, where you're actually trying to fire everything up at once. True. And it's kind, of, it's kind of silly because most of the time when we see people planking, it's like they're trying to not work hard. They're like, oh, you know, relax. No, I want no. you to get in there. We're talking super plank, where you're finding your abs, you're feeling them as hard as you can bracing it against your back, your glutes, your inner thighs, your palms are pushing as hard as you can, you're squeezing your chest. I mean, I'll, I'll list every Thank muscle you. in the body if I could. Thank you. That's the plank we're talking about. Yeah. And yeah. that actually does not get shown. Yeah. That intensity through a plank is usually, most people are just trying to tighten their core. Yeah. And I'm telling you, round out your shoulders, <sighs> dig your fingertips yeah. into the ground, use your quads, yeah. flex your butt cheeks, Yep. make it a whole body move. Mm-hmm. Well, this is why they find it so tough. Yeah, I was just going to say it never go, gets easier. When you get stronger, but you contract as hard as you can, the plank keeps working its way up. It and just, that's foundational because yeah. it keeps improving you. I love that about that. Yep. The the plank, the side plank, glute bridge, they don't look like much because they're anti-movement. But if you're doing them properly, you should be quivering like a leaf in the fall storms before 30 seconds. You know, like really put yourself into it. That touches on that's. The that's core strength. That is you core know, strength. That, we're talking much more beyond just having a high endurance of sit-ups or whatever. I want you to be able to really get your full body all tuned up, all firing, so that it can protect protect you. That's really what it's it about. It is a great protected. Feeling I love that. Kind of like saran wrap or maybe armor, whatever you want to imagine, but creating this stable wrap around your spine from the back of your neck right to the waistband of your pants. To be able to keep that from moving at all is how you keep yourself safe from disc injury, from nervous system injury, and from anything worse. And so if we can't command that kind of full body muscle activation and preventive movement, I would argue you don't have much business being under a bar, swinging from a gymnastics ring, <laughs> jumping up and down, like, cause the landing forces are, are amplified. I mean, it's a big deal for you to be able to keep yourself safe first, but you'll never see it on the cover of a magazine yeah. like that, you know? So well, let us bring that to you at the beginning and say, true core strength is the ability to isolate and to prevent that movement. Try not moving. Yeah. Now, sometimes we use all of those muscles to create movement, like you were mentioning with some plank variations or when we get into proper twisting, you right. know, throwing things. And that's okay for us to 
to build up to. Right. But you will ne- you'll never do as good and you'll never participate as safely if you're going into those things without your base of anti-movement first. Can't say first. any better, th- better than that. Yeah. yeah, yeah if we, we want to fl- we, we pass, go and collect $200. We're just going to ask you not to do that. Yeah. Direct versus indirect. So let's do an indirect. I got one for an indirect that usually catches me a little, most of my clients off guard is a front squat or a front hole goblet squat position, right? So let's give them a definition first because we know what we're talking about yeah. with direct core versus indirect core. I think this is an important distinction to make because direct yeah. core is what gets all the attention. All it's it. usually laying down on your back, doing your sit-ups, doing your leg lifts. And- Even the hollow body hold that we've listed, it's this stuff that's directly focused. That's direct. Yeah, on, yeah. on working these as hard as you can. There's yeah. also indirect core, which is like DJ was given the example Front squat with a front loaded kettlebell and the goblet or position. Bar, yep. or bar, sandbag. Those are exercises where your core is absolutely going to be fired up and triggered. Yeah, high usage. Yeah. But it's kind of like in addition to the squatting motion. Right. right. Yeah. And so that's a great way for you to get a lot of effectiveness in your workout because you're working a lot of muscles at once. And it's a foundational movement pattern for you to practice. Again, it's that, it's that isolation, that anti movement of your spine. But now it's maintaining that while also bending your knees and lowering yourself down and then right. standing back up, right. you know, and that's going to be a, an evolution beyond just isolation when you're stationary. And so I like to work people up to the indirect core. Like I said, it's more effective in your workout. It's definitely more fun because you're not just doing right. all these reps in a row, like right. looking at the ceiling. Um, but I will say, I think everyone should start with direct at the beginning because it really helps sure. beginners and newbies yeah. to have that mo- mind muscle connection to feel how they can contract, you know, the different parts of the core and to bring those all together so that when they do participate in the indirect core movements, they'll be doing those at a, a higher level, right? The core will be activating better if you're more familiar with how, how that feels. feels. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, nice. it, yeah, I think that go, and that goes with a lot of our muscle groups. We can say this with anything. It's yeah. learning to feel what's happening. Yeah. Really clues you in of what's really doing, how much work you're really doing. And that's I think so it's important. important for you to feel yeah. the burning that we call it, or that yeah. intensity inside that muscle body so that yeah. you can understand what's going on. You may not like it. Yeah. But that's beside. It can be pretty sensational, not, right? And, None of this stuff was meant to not be felt. Right. Yeah. That's what I think a lot of people have a hard time with is that you're going to feel some stuff with this. And if you're not okay with that, right, Mm -hmm. you're going to have an even harder time developing. It's these first beginning stages of development. You've got to go through some of these trenches of feelings to understand what's going on and and to accept that feeling is really hard for people. This burning that you and I know, and this yeah. scent, we're very used to it. It's yeah. really common. We know how to block it out. We know how to harness it. And we know how far to take it. Yeah. If you're new to this or it's your first year and you're saying, I need to do core more, go ahead. Yeah. Feel something. I guarantee your first journey into planking and, and direct movements, you're going to get them wrong. Mm-hmm. Even your first two or three seconds, you're like, I can already feel it. It's like, Exactly. Yeah. Go more of that. Yeah. The more you involve yourself into these feelings, the more I believe your body builds this sort of like tolerance for it. It's going, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I felt this before. Mm-hmm. And if you hang out 10 more seconds, it's going to magnify it. Yeah. And if you do it, your body's going to recognize that extra 10 seconds. So the next time you come back to it, it goes, I understand this. Mm-hmm. This is where you build up those tolerances and ability to get through it by having to be in it. Yeah. If you're not willing to be in it, it doesn't work. Sorry. No. I don't know. Like it's too simple. No, you got it, dude. I'm simple. doing it again. <laughs> it's true. Go ahead. Hit the camera for us on our, re- our restart if you don't mind. As you do that, I'll just say that I think that what, you, what you're what you saying there really does matter because we have to be kind of in the trenches and feel that discomfort because there is a certain uh, minimum effective dose that – your body needs in order to have a reason to make a a change. And so when we do the direct core, when you feel that intense discomfort, that's so central, you know, so much inside you, it can be really a really good argument for stopping, right? Your body's telling you to quit doing these reps. Yeah. But I think that with 
uh, with enough time and progress, you get into a, a positive feedback loop where you do feel a sense of accomplishment for being able to go a bit longer yes. or to endure a little more. Yes. Or I think, you know, for fitness professionals, we get a thrill out of proficiency. So we're okay. like, oh, I did it better than ever. Maybe it was the same duration, but you feel like you were more engaged or whatever. Those are the kind of things that can tip you into a positive mindset when you set set yourself up for the next ab training session. Yeah. It I is think true. that's undersold. That's, th I've been talking about this with one of my other clients. It's building on yeah. this positivity, right? Like doing something and then saying, I did it. The next time doing it a little better and yeah. building the positivity from success of that. Yeah, I will be the one of the first ones to admit this, that I have been doing 27th day, 27, yeah, that's days, day, 27 days, 27 days of doing abs every single day. Oh, nice. What? Okay. Some people might have expected you to be doing that 360 days a Absolutely. year. Absolutely. So they might be shocked to know yeah, that what? you're on a you streak. Mean, yeah. This trainer's just doing a streak? No, okay, look. Give him some context, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. I know because, what you're talking about. Yeah, it's good. Because, I, you know, all this hype around the core has got me sort of excited about it. So I've invested more time. The reason, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I know what my future sort of holds for my core, okay? Mm -hmm. And since I'm starting to spend more time snowboarding and skateboarding and being involved in these playing events, I need my core more than ever. Mm -hmm. So I need to really focus in on something that I don't like doing. It's not my favorite thing to do, and I will okay. skip it if I can. Yeah. So what I've done is I said, hey, six to ten minutes are the first. Th well, okay, not true. I warm up first, mm. and then it's six to ten minutes of abs. Okay? okay. Now, it's a short duration. The ab movements don't last longer than a minute, and no shorter than 30 seconds. Okay. okay? Brief. But they're very intense, Yeah. and the time is short. This is how I train my abs. I just know what they're going to do for me later on, and I need to upgrade my abilities, and I know the only way to do that is to upgrade my abs, do right. more of them, because that's kind of my, it's one of my weaker points right. about that. So we talked about it before, right? Weakness bias training is going directly on basically your your suck pile, the things you suck at, starting on the thing you're suckiest get, at. Get done yeah. first. Yeah. Yep, And then go. at the beginning of the workout to really put that proper focus and that good energy into it. And so I think that that's actually a very important point to, to highlight there is that, you know, you're this far in your health and fitness participation, your own workouts, and you're still improving by adding six to 10 minutes of direct core, yeah. right? And that means that everybody who has less experience and less capability than you personally, yeah. they would also benefit from adding that, me included. The reason these shorter time frames work for me though, mm -hmm. is because one, I am more advanced in my core. I, I, I have a better ability than most. Right. Okay. So what I'm choosing to do are higher, harder versions of things that I'm not so good at too sure. as well. Here's what I'm finding. I'm actually pretty proud of myself for doing 27 straight days of this and putting it first in my day. Yeah. Not only that, I'm actually seeing, since I'm re uh, doing some of the same movement patterns, right? Mm. I'm actually seeing an improvement of ability too as well. When you repeat. You when I've repeated improved. this, okay. yeah. And gotcha. so what I'm actually feeling like I would, like we're telling people is you're going to feel this like pride and like, oh, I am getting better yeah. and I am taking note of this. And so every time that I do these abs, I'm thinking, oh man, it's a little easier. However, it is not any less intense. Yeah, good call out. The 27th day, I am still burning and still doing that. Oh, dude, please let this be over. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. But I'm going to stick into it because this is the commitment that I made. Mm -hmm. And every time I do that, and I'll, it works. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of myself. I feel accomplished, and I am getting better at the movements. Yeah. I chose specifically movements that I'm not doing normally. Okay. I've picked other movement patterns because of those ones I would avoid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I'm picking the ones that I don't like the most, and yeah, I'm yeah. adding them in. So I have that ability mentally to do that, and so I am. Yeah. Put it first. That's important, especially if you have a, a clear set and broadcast desire, like you're saying. You want to make a difference here? Well, let's be, let's be a little brave and put it right at the start of our workout and make sure it happens and take away any excuse of running out of time or running low on energy or whatever whatever else might get in your way. I found another benefit. Sidestep it. I found yeah. another benefit to this. It's also part of a great warm-up. Hmm. Oh, man, has it really set yeah. me up? 
for getting ready for the other things I got to do. Yeah. I do all my band work. I do my own hip movement patterns. And then I do my core. All of a sudden, I've busted out a really good sweat, and I am yeah. really jamming ready to go. Yeah. And I'm sure your performance on following exercises is higher because we have that baseline Undoubtedly, muscle Joey. contraction up there. So your safety's up, and your numbers are going to be up too. Because yeah. you know what? Like I was thinking a bit earlier, when we, a few minutes ago, I used to rebel against warnings about safety, right? It was like, hey, I'm 20-something. I don't feel any trouble. I'm good to go. But it's the same things that you should be doing to improve your performance, right? So your coach will say, hey, this this ab work pre you know, pre post warm up pre workout ab portion is going to improve your safety during your back squats. If you're an athlete and your coach says that to you, you should hear, oh, and it's also going to allow me to lift heavier mm. or more slowly with control mm. or whatever is my stated goal, right? You're going to improve your performance in the same moment that you're improving your safety. Yes. I think that's just a killer distinction, and it's, it's an important reason what why a, we're doing this. Yeah, what a nice way to now purposely train your abs. Like, yeah. you mean to save my own ass? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, not just to see them, but it's for me to save me. Please, yeah, take a different spin on this. Yeah. yeah think about it on a more important scale. Um, should we round this out, man? Did we well, really clear it? Well, let's clear see here. Board? We're checking out the board. So, um, yeah, we covered safety. We got... When we talk about like uh, actual training principles for core, I think you mentioned a few of them just by you know talking about this this effort you're on. It it generally needs to be pretty high intensity because you need to push yourself into that I threshold agree. where it's going to make a difference. And when you get stronger, you have to do a little more to continue to push that envelope. That's just the progression of training. That happens with every yeah. muscle group, by right? the way. And I think that for some people that can be a bit of a a bit of a defeating sensation because they're like, when is it going to get easy? Well, the training moments don't get easy because that's when they lose effectiveness. It's the other 23 hours of the day that will get easier, yes, right? And that's so, right. You know, for myself, uh, I do these hellacious, uncomfortable ab workouts that are really, you know, not something I love doing, but I get a, a real thrill from never feeling my abs limiting me during my jujitsu matches. so awesome, yeah, dude. Yeah, like, I want to tell people that. That's, yeah. Keep going. That's so good. Cool. And that's something that I do actually repeat to myself in my head mid-participation. You, you yeah. know, and, and to DJ's point about positivity and the feedback cycles that we can get into, uh, you know, in my own head, I'm a relentless cheerleader for my own performance mid-session, mid-workout. I mean, heck, I'll lose a jujitsu match, but I'll tell myself, man, that guy was huge. You're lucky. You're so good that you didn't lose... By even worse. Yeah. Right. And so right, I, I'm saying I take a negative situation, a negative outcome, and I still find a little positive to, to give myself a, you know, just like cheerleaders on the side of the field, their team might be down on points. They're not going to go quiet. They're still going to be cheering. And I think you should do that for yourself. And if you're doing your core workouts and you're uncomfortable with it, but you can think of what you're getting from it, use that and keep yeah. going and, and that use that to make sure you get the intensity and then also the frequency, right? We need to use these muscles often. That can be achieved through the complexity of the, the indirect core, mm -hmm. right? If you're generally doing full body movements and you're making sure to engage your abs, you will get frequent training. True. Maybe nine tenths of your workouts will have a substantial ab component. And the tenth tenth will be the direct, yeah. right? And so we, we do expect to see that frequency now. However, we have to make sure we keep ourselves safe during that time. And we've talked about it. Yep, Prioritize the anti-movement. That's the first job of your core. After that is achieved, you can start to get into these fancy leg movements and some hip movements. Twists I and mean, turns yeah. and lifts and stuff. Rotation, there's... counter rotation. Yep. There's implements. I mean, almost unlimited. You can do all of your barbell, dumbbell, kettlebell, sandbag. You could use bands. There's a million special gadgets just for core. There's like electrode belts if you want to put them on, but all of those things are going to adhere to the principles and the points we've already right. touched on so far. What must be noted first, and I think you bring it up before we started this, what we, what we should always say to you first is this, before purchasing said implements, do these things with your own body weight. Right. Don't yeah. purchase a tool because it looks cool and because the commercial shows it working. Yeah. One is probably the diet that the person's on. That's why you can see the rags. Yep, we talked about and two, that. two, it's a sales pitch. Yeah. We know this. And so if you really want to get your core involved, do it from the premise of the beginnings. Yeah. Be important. I'm sorry. 
it is important that you, again, start with building the foundation first mm -hmm. before buying toys. Yeah, now, absolutely. The gadgets and accessories, maybe they might make it a little a little more likely to you know happen if you use those tools, but the foundations please. should be what we know works, which is equipment independent, body weight only. Right. You can do them anywhere. And that should be the stuff that you you start with, you build your base, because it's going to give you that safety, and it's also going to bump up your performance by allowing you to do better when you get on that ab wheel, or you hang from those gymnastics rings or whatever. I mean, you're if you're at that level, to. yeah, that's a high level. I'll put in some footage of me doing it. <laughs> yeah, which you should. It <laughs> yeah, you should, well, which is put a it so. very, very high level of those are tough. Control. Yeah, oh my God, but dude, you know, they're horrible. That's a good example. You're right because I'm doing planks, hollow bodies, and and glute bridge ten to the one of those hard ab stuff, you know, that's like the flashy impressive, things, actually. you know? So that's an important thing for people to know. And I'll tell you this, in this 27th day, mm -hmm. I've used zero tools oh, cool. for my core. Nice. It direct core, sorry. Direct, the, 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 the direct the, that core. That six to 10 minutes, Yeah. there's no tools. Oh, sweet. These legs are heavy enough. Yeah, your own body weight this is enough This upper resistance. body is heavy enough. Yeah. I don't need a tool at all. Yeah. To do your core. That's a good point. You want to get away from not having to buy any implements and save yourself time and money? Yeah. Don't buy the tool. It's unnecessary. But if you're an awesome star and you want to take it to the next level, go get your ab wheel. Yeah. All right. Go I get, got one. Go Over hang there. from the bar. <laughs> go do these other things. And I do some of these things myself too, but yeah. you don't need it yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Anything left on there? Man, I think we covered it. Okay, you good. Wanna, like, I, I think the last bit here is um, something that is always relevant with core training, and we've touched on it in our conversation before the show. Uh, there tends to be a little bit of a sensation where people will look for a new solution without having really extracted the full value from a time-tested known solution. I'm glad you brought that up. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, okay. I, so good. This is true. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, you know, like I, I really advocate for like doing what we know works with known risk history, for example, rather than trying for something newfangled, a cutting edge, which might have an unknown detriment. That's something we've yet to find out about. And I think that matters a lot to core because some of the hardest movements, right, physically most intense and most rewarding for your training goals are not brand new. They're, no. they're these time tested and they, oh, they still work. That's why you hear about them and you read about them in the books. And so I encourage people to keep that in mind when they're, when they're working on their own visible abs or improving their core strength to avoid injury. Stick with what we know works and then work on exploring new stuff. Yeah, we talked about that in the podcast of the five uh, exercises that we would have picked. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because we picked those ones, exercises, because they were foundational movements that always work yeah and that's why i picked them one of the reasons why i picked them it's like these are fundamental Good reminder sound yeah so thank you for bringing that up yeah cool. please do those first yeah. before nice. you go into the the that's so important and i think that you know right on the heels of of that argument is our last bit on there which is the displacement value of silly bs when people spend time doing something dumb it's detracting from that, that that time that they could be spending on a, a better solution. And there's a lot of this in the fitness industry. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's trying to get a little piece of your, of your spending. But I think it's particularly prevalent here because we see these devices like sit on your back and eat potato chips and you're going to have this device shock your abs and, and then end up with this six pack that's photoshopped on. I think that the displacement value, again, the time that you spend – not doing what you should because you're working on something flashy and silly. That's really something to examine in yourself and make sure that your training program doesn't have uh, any of that pitfall. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, it, it, I think we'll, I'll be specific with them. Yeah. I think we should be honest. I have one of those things. Oh yeah. Personal experience. Yeah, let's, Lay it on. Let's, let's, it's let's, not anything to be embarrassed no, about. No, it's, it's not. That's why you get to speak about I've it. I've used this stupid yeah. thing and guess what? Uh, it will smash your abs if you use it. Right. Mm -hmm. However, it does not replace what we have talked about. Yeah. The, the beginnings, right? This is one of those developed things, right? For people to sidestep mm -hmm. having to crunch their own abs. That's a good way to put it. Or hold their own body. Yeah. They want to 
they want a, the genie in the lamp. They want a pill. And so they've got yeah. this device. Shortcut. Right? That shortcuts it. But it actually does not shortcut it. Mm-hmm. I have not seen any improvement from this belt that magnifies what else I do there because of the way it does it. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's not contracting my abs because right. it is. Right. But it's not leading to me being better at something else. There you go. And that's the thing people don't realize. It's not making you better at all. Mm-hmm. And it just costs you X amount of dollars. And it does take a certain amount of time to wear it. Yeah. And I say this. I've worn this thing while mowing my lawn or mm-hmm. doing some yard work. And I'm like, I should not be able to wear a device like this and continue on. That means my intensity is not enough. Mm-hmm. And I'm, the duration is too long. Yeah, good point. It's a device. It's a contraption. I wear it. I've had it. Does it work? Yes, but not the way you want it to work. <laughs> that that's how it should be said. Yeah, <laughs> not that way. And yeah. that's that that you know, Photoshop that that uh, model who's got yeah. it. That's that's consumer what society yeah. thinking that you need a new gadget to solve an old problem. But the know. real problem is you need to go back to old school stuff yeah. and do what really works. Yeah. Take us out, actually, and let's let's boil this out. We're out. Yeah, we're about 45 minutes, so we'll finish this off. Thank yeah. you for listening to another one. I'll recap this. Hit it. Okay. Let's talk about how to get abs recap. Okay, look. Who's it for? It's for everybody. Your anatomy has abs. You have internal, external obliques. You have rectus abdominis, and you have your transverse abdominis. That's the anatomy of the ab. Everybody has it. And all core work will help you. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs it. Don't worry about the visible part. Mm-hmm. Okay? And that should be your last priority. That's the last priority. Brace core is more important. We talked about the anti-movement being the first, well, non-movements you should do for your core. Then think about direct and indirect. Mm-hmm. Movement patterns matter, but later on as you do it. Right. Our training principles are this. Look. Intensity the frequency and duration, keep everything safe. Don't get bogged down by all the tools and implements that are out there showing a quick way to do yeah. something. And look, watch your diet. Yeah. If you really want to see your abs, diet correctly. That's crucial, yeah. Okay. Got to keep them visible by being lean. <laughs> all right, thanks for joining us on another one. Thanks for being here all the way to the end. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Get notified, everything. Yeah, go do your abs. See you next time, yeah.